welcome everybody. Um, happy St. Patty's Day to those of you that celebrate it. Um, what I wanted to do is um, introduce a topic that is really near and dear to our hearts at DQ, which is how do you prevent uh, accessibility issues from getting in? It's called the accessibility broken windows. How do you stop accessibility broken windows from happening? The broken windows theory is a theory that states that signs of disorder, crime, creates an environment that actually encourages further crime and disorder, including serious crimes. So if you look at accessibility, if you let minor issues in accessibility sneak in, it creates a, a disorder and allows bigger accessibility defects to creep in. It's up to you to target those accessibility bugs and not let technical debt built up. You can do this iteratively. You can do this in small iterations and we're going to show you how you do that. How? We're going to introduce a 12 step program to you on how to be able to prevent accessibility defects. When we think of uh, uh, you know, agile development, we think of really three buckets. We think of um, uh, the dev cycle where you have the first bucket, an individual working in their workstation, a developer sitting and working, is doing certain activities like editing code, testing unit testing, writing automated unit tests, and pushing code to the team repo. This is what you do on your machine. Second bucket is what happens in a team, in a shared resources on behalf of a development team um, to release software. And that includes things like gating code quality, making sure that code that is submitted by a developer is reviewed before it's merged, running end-to-end -end integration tests and automated regression tests, basically assuring the quality before a release goes out. Third bucket is what happens not in a single team, but across teams, what happens across products, across websites in an organization. And that includes making sure that you're monitoring what is going on across teams is there technical debt that is accessibility te technical debt that is actually piling on and doing an audit for compliance, um, reporting on what the status of ADA compliance is. So with that, I'm, if you're thinking, whoa, 12 steps, that's overwhelming. Do I need to do everything? No, you can adopt each one of these 12 steps at your own pace, according to your own needs and situation. And, and actually breaking it down into these 12 steps, in our opinion, is very aligned with the way agile development is done. It reduces complexity, and we all know that complexity kills, right? So we try to break it down. Um, what we've also done is we've got... Uh, tools at every step of the way. So these 12 steps that we talk about, we've got products and tools to help. One part is the linter that's designated by the green circle with an L inside it. The linter will help you in various steps in the individual and team and org buckets. Another part of Axe DevTools HTML are the APIs. Those are designated by the purple circle with an A inside of it. And then the third part of Axe DevTools HTML is the browser extension designated by the blue circle with a B inside of it. And we'll show you how using these at different points in the dev cycle can get you big results. So the question is, why test early, test often? Because why do I need 12 steps? You know, um, really think of it as, again, aligned with Agile. Next slide. And I'm going to introduce a word of the day, which is incrementalism. 
which means a method of decision making in which changes are implemented in small steps or decisions are made gradually step by step as a problem unfolds well you know we wanted to make sure that accessibility testing fits into the agile development a paradigm that you're working in that means it's incremental iterative you make step by step progress as you code unit test end to end test do your regression tests and qa and success successively refine those tests increase what you do and harris will be showing you how accessibility tests can be refined over time as you learn from the feedback loops provided by accident tools over to you harris all right thank you pretty i'm uh, harris schneiderman um uh, product manager of the axe extension and related products and i'm here to put my developer hat on uh, i am a developer at heart uh, so that's not going to be too hard i had a developer hat laying around so i'm going to do that right now and we're going to focus on the individual portion that pretty just covered again that'll be editing code <clears throat> testing interactively we're going to write some unit tests um, and we're going to push some code to the to the repo so we can see kind of the full um individual portion of, of our cycle here. Um, so I'm gonna get right into a demo. And um, so first off, we're gonna be working in a little test page that I set up just for this talk, just for you all. I made it with love. It may or may not have some accessibility issues and uh, we're gonna work through those and maybe look at how we can prevent them from happening in the future, how we can learn from, from the various tools that DQ offers developers. Um, so without further ado, I'm just gonna get right into it. Real quick, uh, I didn't choose any framework. I didn't want to muddy the waters or anything. We're just working with plain old HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and we got we have a nice little uh, test framework we're using. And um, what I'm going to do now is showcase the first tool. Um, I, I think it was uh, a, a green L or something. But we're going to look at Axelinter uh, for VS Code. So Axelinter for VS Code is a VS Code plugin free freely available you can install it if you use vs code right from your from the software itself if you want to look on the marketplace it's there it's called axe accessibility linter um and i'm just going to show you a quick example of how awesome it is so um we we always stress catching stuff early as early as possible um which is why we always talk about shift left thinking about uh accessibility uh, from the design phase or the ideation phase all the way through development. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to type some inaccessible HTML. And as soon as I'm done typing, I'm just going to make a, an empty button, a button without text. As soon as I'm done with that, we're going to see some awesome um, the, the linter in action. So I'm going to go button, uh, I close the tag, and right away I get this little uh, red squiggly line like a, like a misspelled word in a Google Doc or something, or Microsoft Word. Uh, but uh, I hover over it and it says Axe Linter ensures buttons have discernible text. So it says, oh yeah, you need, you need to have text here, silly. Um, or we can do uh, an image without alt text. Um, so same thing, I had a squiggly line that says, hey, you need to either um, give it an alt or a role of none or presentation. So highly recommend it, uh, this, this code, it really helps uh you catch issues right while you're coding i haven't even hit save yet and it's and it's already telling me uh how to fix my issues i haven't even tested it in the browser i haven't pushed it this is really really early on in the process and can help catch some of those low-hanging fruit um and next up the next demo we, we have a lot to get through there might be uh some overlap in, in these tools but that's intentional we know that um you know some stuff i show might not fit in with, with one of your team's um processes so we're showing a lot of different ways that you can you can catch accessibility issues. So next up, probably my favorite is the because uh, I'm biased because I work on it uh, is the Axe DevTools extension. I'm in Chrome. I have my test page up that I showed you a minute ago, and beside that is the DevTools extension. Um, so I got a nice little side by side set up for my testing. I'm ready to go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is hit scan page. So give it a second. And right off the bat, we have three issues that Axe Core was able to find. If, if you're familiar with Axe Core, it's an accessibility rules engine. Um, its claim of fame is to, to have zero false positives. You might have used Axe if you have, it, it, you might not even know it. If you have like Chrome and you've used Lighthouse, that's what's running uh, 
a subset of Axe under the hood. Um, but this extension uses the Axe Core open source library, and uh, we just called axe.run for those JavaScript developers in the crowd. We have three issues um, that were found automatically. All I had to do was press a button, and within milliseconds, we, we had this awesome, beautiful report. We have uh, some issues with uh, this link that has uh, a roll of tab, which probably shouldn't happen to begin with, but if it, if it was supposed to be a tab, it, might, it needs to be inside of a, a tab list element. We also have some color contrast issues, which are uh, really common. So the the we have I have an expand collapse accordion kind of thing set up with a kind of a royal blue background and white text, so it's actually kind of hard to see. Um, and the axe extension is telling me, hey, you have an issue here. In fact, it's exactly three point four to one uh, contrast ratio, and the expected contrast ratio is four and a half to one. So we have we have some work to do. But before I fix them, normally I'll just quickly fix these. Uh, but we have we have some other cool uh, tools to show off. So I'm actually going to save my results. I'm logged in as a pro user. Uh, Liz can probably dr drop a link uh, in chat of how you might want to start your 14-day uh, free trial. Highly recommend. Um, so what this what the this pro feature enables me to do is actually create a persistent uh, record of of the testing I just did. So I'm gonna I clicked the uh, save button and I can give it a name. Um, I might prefix it with hello axcon. Um, I'm gonna hit save. And give it a minute to save. Now I got. Now I can go have lunch, close my browser, and come back, and I can actually resume this testing um, in the future. So that's pretty great. Um, th there's all sorts of cool features that I'd love to show you, but I want to. I want to get to the the most important testing that uh, relates to to what Preeti just covered, which are the intelligent guided tests. Intelligent guided tests um, are really just a. Uh, some, some tools catered to specific um, areas of testing, maybe specific types of elements on the page. And what, they'll, what the tools will do is ask you really simple questions, often yes or no, uh, maybe identify some missing elements. Um, and, and it does the heavy lifting and actually based on, based on you guiding our robots, telling it information about your page, uh, we're able to actually raise some more sophisticated, complex accessibility issues, which is really cool. You don't need to know anything about accessibility. You could have never even read a word of, of WCAG or ARIA or anything, any of those specs, and you could be able to perform all these tests. So it's, it's a really cool way to uh, increase your coverage uh, beyond what automation tools can give you. So first off, one of my favorite tools is the Interactive Elements tool. So again, I'm still in the browser extension right next to my test page. I'm going to click Start Testing Interactive Elements. And it says, hey, make sure you get your page in the right state before you start testing. I want to make sure we, we cover, um, I, have, I have some nice kind of componentization set up, so I'm actually able to test, um, I don't have to test everything. Like I'm just going to expand one of my accordions, so I get contact boxes, which I haven't mentioned. Um, because I wanted to be a hipster or something, I set up um, custom checkboxes rather than uh, semantic HTML elements because I'm silly and I wanted to create some, some fun realistic scenarios for you. But please don't try this at home. Use semantic HTML. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to get started with the interactive elements tool. Uh, so right off the bat, it has a cute little robot icon that says, please wait while our AI scans for interactive elements. So there's a lot going on right now under the hood, um, like a lot. So we, we scrape the page for um, things that we think are interactive, whether that's through roles or through tab index, maybe it's focusable. Um, we also go above and beyond. We actually send send a, uh, some data to our ML server um, or our AI, AI server, and it actually tries to identify things that look like interactive elements um, with kind of machine vision, but weren't marked up as such. So our, our, our little scraper that looked for all the interactive elements couldn't find it, but actually we have something really cool here. It says, hey, our AI has found one element which appears to be interactive, but is not marked up as such. We've pre-selected this prediction. If it is not interactive element, we're sorry, remove it below. Um, it's pretty easy to, to remove the suggestions. We're still, this is a brand new feature. Um, so we'd love your feedback. We're, we're monitoring it closely to see how often people accept these suggestions or um, remove them. So what it's done is actually identified this purple kind of call to action um, button in the footer here, contact us. Harris was silly when he built this and he didn't mark it up as a button apparently. Um, so our AI actually caught that for him. And um, I'm going to accept the suggestion. It's asking me to identify if anything else was missed. And in this case, I think we're all good to go. So I'm going to hit next. Um, it's going to take some screenshots uh, just to, for ease of testing so we can, we can generate some thumbnails for you so you can kind of 
uh, prevent yourself from having to go back and forth. Um, we went ahead and grouped all the elements for you based on a number of, of heuristics. And I'm just going to select uh, one element from each group. So one accordion uh, button expandy collapse thing, uh, because like I said, they're, they're kind of cut from the, the same uh, component code. So if I fix the issue in one place, it's going to fix both. Uh, same thing goes with these checkboxes. I'm just going to select the first checkbox. No need to keep redundantly testing every checkbox. Same thing goes with the footer link. Although, as we saw with the axe core result, we actually have it. We already know we have an issue here. Um, but let's let's take a look uh, and take our testing a little further. And finally, I'm going to actually test the uh, the AI suggestion that button. So we're going to cycle through each of those four selections I just made. So first off, the individual button that is part of a kind of an accordion. So it does have some states. Um, this, on these steps, we're going to assess the uh, accessible name, the role, and any applicable states. And the cool thing about this test is you start off in one state, but we actually allow you to break into other states and perform some testing in those two. So it's it's a pretty, just to get meta, it's an interactive testing of interactive elements. Um, so it's having me verify that the text individual accurately describes the elements meeting, which I think is great. It is. I think it, it describes it perfectly. Uh, next up is the is the role, which is button. I think that's a good a good role to have on it. And finally, the most interesting part is the states. So I know that this, you know, I, I built this thing. I know that it has an expanded and a collapsed state. So um, I'm going to go through the states. Uh, we have stuff like disabled, pressed, selected, checked, read only. But I'm focused on this expanded thing. And right now, um, I'm going to inform the tool that, hey, this, this button right now in the DOM currently is expanded. Um, but I also am not done yet. I want to test the collapse state. So I'm going to go down to this test another state for this element button, click it. It's saying, okay, cool. Put it in that state and we'll test it again. So I'm going to collapse the individual um, button, click check again. Um, once again, it's saying uh, that the we couldn't find anything uh, dealing with the expanded or collapsed state. So I'm going to tell it, hey, it's in the collapsed state right now. Let's move to the next element. I'm going to open it back up. The custom checkbox, like I said, it's not a native input type checkbox. I'm sorry. Uh, we have an accessible name of editing code. Looks great. Roll of checkbox. Beautiful. Now the states. It's saying it's not checked right now. It's not saying not applicable. It's saying not checked, which is good. We have a start. We're conveying that checked state to our assistive technology users. Uh, but let's see if we actually uh, handle the checked state. So I'm going to go ahead and um, test another state for the element. Go back in the test page, check it. And then back in the developer tools, say check element state. Oh, Harris missed the mark. It looks like it's still showing up as not checked. So I'm going to inform the tool, hey, this is checked right now, and move on to the next element. Uh, finally, or second to last, we have AxCon link. Um, it's saying the accessible name is AxCon. That's perfect. It's actually just a link to the uh, AxCon homepage. Um, but here's where some, some more AI comes into play and helps you out. It's saying, hey, uh, you added role tab to this element, but our AI thinks it's a link. Is that correct? Uh, so the AI identified that there's there's a kind of a, a list of links um, and that it that this element is likely a link, which is great. So I'm just going to click yes. I didn't have to do much work. I let the robots do all the thinking for me, which is great. There's never going to be a downside to that, right? Um, and I'm going to move on to the next element. Finally, the contact us, the culprit of, of not using a, a button and using a div instead. Uh, the accessible name in this case is great, contact us, but I'm going to have to tell the tool that it's supposed to be a button and there are no states. So let's let it save some results. All right, so in five minutes, mostly of me blabbering on, um, we were able to find five accessibility issues. Um, on this page, we can review our results. We can do fun things like highlight the, the element in question, inspect it, and even view a uh, standalone page dedicated to the, to the issue, uh, the violation, if you will. So I'm gonna hit finish so I can save my results. Like I said, this, these testing results since I'm a pro user are persistent, so I can go to lunch and uh, come back and do some testing. Okay, so I'm looking good on time. I'm gonna do a uh, quick, my, my personal favorite inter, um, intelligent guided test, which is the keyboard test. Um, and the reason it's my favorite, I think you'll actually uh, get a glimpse of it here in a minute. So I'm gonna, I'm back in the dev tools. I said, uh, start keyboard guided test. It's telling me to get my page back in the right state. I think we're good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna test in the same state that we tested uh, the interactive elements with the individual uh, accordion expanded. And I'm gonna hit start uh, in a second. When I do hit start, I like, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put my hands up because uh, 
no tab keys will be harmed during this next portion of the demo. It's going to actually uh, start automatically tabbing through the page. Uh, for those curious, it's firing real tabs as if I'm, I'm a user who's really tabbing th through the page. It's not like relying on this page's JavaScript key down listeners and I'm, I'm actually leveraging simulating those. It's actually firing tabs. These are real ones. So you can really, you can really get a, a, a good look at the um, keyboard um, sequence on your page. So I'm going to hit start. It's actually telling me I, <laughs> I wasn't supposed to do that. It's telling me to start the, uh, the tabbing at the top of the document. So I'm going to do that. Um, now we're tabbing. And so what's happening on the screen is in the dev tools, it's saying we're performing this automatic tabbing. And in my page, we're actually seeing um, enumerated highlights show up. So each tab stop gets a little one, then a two, then a three. And um, wow, that went to, that went quicker than, than I was expecting. So it actually found 10 tab stops uh, while it was recording. But let me go over what it just did. Um, just, just so you can get an idea of, of all the cool heavy lifting that these tools do. It was obviously tabbing through the page. It was for each tab stop, uh, assessing a number of things like its successful name. We, we just verified some of those in, in the last tool, the role, um, because if it's a tab stop, we need to make sure it has some kind of interactive role. And I think the coolest part is we actually uh, assess the focus indication. So we'll be able to raise issues if an element doesn't have a focus ring at all. Um, so really cool stuff. I didn't have to do anything but click start so far. So I'm feeling great. Um, now it's asking me if there are any elements that uh, I expected to be in the tab order, but we're not. Um, yeah, actually, I know the tool, the, the last tool run told me that this thing should be a button. So I'd expect this button to be in the tab order. So I'm going to select the contact us button. It's, it's unfortunately, as we can see in the dev tools UI div class button. I hope you never do this in, in the real world, but, um, I did it to, to prove a point. So, um, just like that, all I had to do was, was identify one element and our testing's done. Took a minute, found three issues. We have two instances of focus indication missing altogether for the accordions. Oops, my bad. I can fix that pretty easily, uh, but the tool helped me find it. Um, and there's no way to perform the contact us button like with a space bar or enter with, with a, a keyboard only. So it raised that issue too. So I'm gonna hit save. We're great. We're looking great. Um, so the cool thing about running these tools, I think is that it's almost like a, a tutorial, like it teaches you about accessibility as you go through them. So I think we can take what we've learned here from just these two tool runs. We have a bunch of other tools, by the way, which we don't have enough time for modal structure lists, images and forms. Uh, but I want to take what we've learned here from these, uh, these eight issues total. Um, and we can actually learn a little more if, if we look at some issue breakdown. Uh, but once we look at some, some of this info, I want to, I want to apply these lessons to, to my code base and maybe prevent them from happening in the future. Not only do I now know more about um, accessibility, but I actually know really sophisticated things like like how to you know toggle state uh, of checked or expanded. So let's take a look. So I clicked on um, the interactive elements five issues and same same uh, UI view that we had um, when I right after I scanned. And for time's sake, I'm just going to uh, fast forward to the important part, which is uh, custom remediation info. Uh, that was that's dynamic and built based on what I said and uh, I told the, and informed the tool of during my test run. So it's saying uh, for here, let me highlight. This. So for the individual accordion head, it says apply the following states are expanded true. It should have one for false too. Yep, sure enough, it does. And um, the the checkbox actually says replace aria checked with uh, equals false with aria checked equals true. So it's saying hey, when it's checked, you need to convey that check state. I think this is really cool because this this specific message it, it actually detected that hey this this content is using a custom checkbox not a native checkbox so that remediation info is catered to the way that you're coding your page it wasn't it, it's aware and so it's gonna it's gonna tell you stuff based on what it knows so let's take those two lessons <clears throat> excuse me and let's uh, see if we can prevent them from happening in the future so take a sip of my coffee. Because uh, we're about to get into some unit testing real quick. So what we what we're looking at now is my code editor. I'm in VS Code, right where I was showing off the cool uh, linter, and um, I have some I have some unit tests set up. So let me open up a terminal. And I'm going to run these unit tests real quick. Um, for those of you who don't know what unit tests are, a uh, brief overview is basically um, it's it's some tests that I'm running on my on the actual HTML code. 
uh, that make various assertions that kind of prove that my, my code meets the requirements. Uh, in this case, we're going to be focused on accessibility requirements. So um, it's great if, if stuff works, if you manually test, but what if I'm making code code based changes in the future and I break some existing functionality? Unit test should be there to, to help uh, catch that. So I'm going to run my test command real quick. It's yarn test. I have a test suite set up for my checkboxes and one set up for the accordion. So um, I don't want to focus too much on the actual tests uh, like the runner or anything. Um, just a really cool pro tip for you. Um, most unit testing frameworks have a hook to run before um, all your tests run before each uh, specific test is run and after all of them and after each. Uh, so what I've done is um, I've set up an after each that actually runs acts, um, which is really cool because the, as you might guess, if you're writing a bunch of unit tests for a sophisticated web app, it might actually be inherently putting that app into various states. So it's always great to have Axe run. So um, just straight up out of the box Axe core. I'm not using any fancy integration, uh, but but we do offer tons of fancy integrations for whatever framework you're using. So what I tried to do is I, I, tried, I knew I was doing accessibility talks. I wanted to set up some accessibility specific tests. So what I've done is, hey, I know that when I click a checkbox, it should toggle the check state. Now, unfortunately, it must not have been sufficient because we just found out we had some checked issues, right? So what I can do is taking the lessons I learned, I can actually beef up my unit tests by enhancing the assertion. So instead of just relying on the, the modifier class, I'm gonna actually make an assertion, the um, checkbox.get attribute aria checked is false when we're collapsed. And I'm going to use copy and paste, which is dangerous. Uh, it's true once we click the checkbox. I want to make sure that, and then we're going to click it again, proving that it toggles back to false. So let's run our tests and see if they all pass. Cool. Uh, now, for time's sake, I was going to write the, the same kind of things for both the tests and for the accordion, but you get the point. I would do the same thing in the accordion. I would say my tests that were written poorly that are just relying on this modifier class, I would actually um, check for the expanded state. Same thing goes. The lesson learned there for me, honestly, is uh, write your CSS using th these accessibility attributes rather than uh, modifier classes, so then it forces forces you to, to use that from the start, which is great. Um, so we've we've run our unit tests. Um, I kind of did it in a um, in a uh, in a funny fashion, but like I said, we just learned from from the testing we did. Uh, so the last thing I want to show you is something really cool, a different kind of um, use case of the linter, which is the Axe linter server. Uh, I think Liz can post a link uh, of how you can request a demo of this. It's kind of brand new, really excited to, to be working with it already. And I set up kind of a custom um, pre-commit hook. So let's see, we have, we have some code changes. So I'm gonna um, add those. And actually for fun, you know what? Let's do one more thing. Let's add that terrible nameless button back so we can really see the linter in action. Um, so let's get commit. Hello, AxCon. Oops, you know what? Made a mistake. I'm going to check out a branch because I want to set up a pull request. Sorry about that. All right. So I'm going to add all my code changes. I'm going to commit. What's going to happen when I commit is it's going to kick off a script that is actually running some accessibility checks. Um, so if you're not using VS Code or you didn't want to install that beautiful plugin, you can actually set up the linter to be a pre-commit hook. Um, this is a basic shell script. It's doing a ton of cool stuff. But um, what happened is I typed in my commit message, hit enter, which will will do will actually perform the commit, and it ran some accessibility tests, and it says, hey. What's going on here? Um, and it actually detected some issues in a different HTML file that I have in this project. So it's cool. Helps you catch those issues before you actually push. Um, I set up the, the pre-commit hook to actually uh, not prevent the commit from happening. So I can actually push this branch um, and show off a different use of um, the Axelinter server. So I'm going to push my branch up. And before I show the pull request itself, I want to go back to the slides and excuse me, we will 
put our team hat on. So everyone changed their dev hat to team hat. Um, again, this is where we gate code quality, we review code, we run automated and regression tests, and we assure quality in general. Um, so I'm going to pop back out of the slide, go back to the uh, pull request that I was about to create. And hello, Axcon. Happy that you came. I hope you're enjoying it so far. I'm going to create my pull request, and let's let some more magic happen. While that magic happens, I figured it was a great time to show you what's going to be run. So um, I'll save the cool Axlinter part for the end, but we're going to actually run those unit tests in CI. And we're also going to run something I haven't shown you yet, which are our very, very, very minimalist uh, end end tests. So I'm using a cool library called here. Let me make this part of the window bigger. Sorry about that. So we have a awesome library called Axe Puppeteer. Uh, it's an integration for Puppeteer that runs Axe, as you can imagine. Uh, so just to give you an idea of, of how easy it is, uh, you do a few setup things. You, you launch your Puppeteer browser. Puppeteer, sorry, is a, um, a headless Chromium browser, basically, where you can do uh, testing where your app's actually rendered in, in a real browser, actually. Um, so what I've done is I've done a await new Axe Puppeteer uh, dot analyze. And so what I do is I gather some results uh, on the HTML page that we're looking at in the browser where I was running the Axe extension, and I ran Axe. And so if we find that there are violations, I print out a pretty table of the results, and I exit with a, a, a one status code, which means error, fail, bad, no good. Um, otherwise, we, we'll, we'll just print out the word Axe clean, good job, and exit with a clean error code, or status code, sorry. So let's see. Um, yep, I figured this would happen. So just because GitHub wanted to torture us, we're looking at some uh, some issues with with the uh, GitHub Actions. So those didn't actually run. But luckily, I did a dry run last night for you. And um, I'll show you what I was going to show you if GitHub was actually healthy right now. So whenever you push, push a, a code, I've, uh, a new pull request, I've set up a GitHub Action that runs that Axlinter server. It actually takes the HTML of the of all the all the HTML files that are in the pull request that are changed in your branch um, sends them to the Axlinter server. Axlinter processes them, spits out some results. So yet another way that you can run Axe on content, and it, it automatically comments on the pull request saying, "Here's your report." And it looks like in the foo.html um, file we have some some nameless button issues among other things, and same with the uh, index HTML file, which is like I said, it's from this this silly nameless button that I added. Um, and let's take a quick look at our, at our other CI output. If GitHub was actually working, I'd be able to show you on the commit we just made. Uh, so the end end test, um, it says, hey, three violations were found. It's, it's from that script that I just showed you again. And um, here's the table of the results. We have a ARIA required parent. Remember, we found that with the axe extension. We have the button name, the thing I just added, and the color contrast issue, which we didn't fix yet. Uh, so you can see those, it's just not yet another way to catch those issues. And we have our unit tests, which again, are all passing right now, hooray. So that was a lot of stuff with our team hat on. I'm sorry GitHub was being a jerk to us this morning. Uh, hopefully it, it, they resolve their issues soon. Um, so I'm gonna put my uh, my organization, what would that be? My SME, my QA, my PO hat on maybe. Um, and I will pass it back to Preeti. All right. Thank you. So, um... I think what we saw, thank you, Harris. Step number one, step number two, Liz has put in the chat how you can download those. Those are free. You can get started for free but with the VS Code linter as well as the browser extension, which does the automated testing. For the rest of them, steps three through nine that Harris showed, just get in touch and we'll show you how to build those in and stop those accessibility broken windows from happening. So with my central accessibility team lead or the quality person hat on, number 10 is about really monitoring code quality and making sure the tech debt doesn't get out of control. Um, next slide. So what we're going to do is the Axe linter is actually integrated into Sonar Cube, and you can have in your quality uh, gates and your dashboard, quality dashboard, you can see how many issues were there and how the code smells. And you can actually 
monitor that at that point. Um, but then you still have, you know, getting through automated tests, but doing the API or you're doing it through the browser extension or a combination as we want you to do. And by the way, if you don't have automated tests, don't worry. We still want you to be able to do accessibility inside a command line interface, a CLI, that you can script your critical flows with and you can still do automated testing, right? Um, but the next slide. Now, you're done with 80% of your testing using the linter, using the browser extension, using the APIs, using the CLI, whatever you're using in all those steps one through nine. You've done some uh, code monitoring uh, in your quality dashboard, code quality dashboard in step 10, but you still have some manual testing to do. Um, in the browser extension in Axe DevTools Pro, you actually have a, a comprehensive list of what's left to test, the 20% that we talked about. And you can also go through Axe Auditor, which is a single system of record, and do the testing there. Um, it gives you step-by-step -step instructions. And frankly, it's, uh, 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 you know, your, your conformance um, proof. Your proof of conformance is all stored. It does it for HTML, but it's also got uh, testing methodologies for PDF, for Word documents, for your entire Microsoft Office suite and kiosks and all kinds of things, very comprehensive. Um, and then finally, if you have followed steps one through 11, you definitely will not and should not find anything in the final production step, but you do need to monitor because sometimes just like, you know, with every um, process, you can make mistakes, right? So Axe Monitor will allow you to basically say code blue, you know, we've got an emergency here or a smoke alarm, we let something through, allows you to dynamically scan single uh, page web apps, websites at a whole, PDFs, and to be able to report on things that slip through to production, which is hopefully not going to happen if you're following the 12-step program. And with that, I'm going to actually open it up for questions Wait, and answers. Hey, hey Preeti, can we, I think we yeah. have enough time. Can we show the what's left to test? Do you want to walk people through that real quick? I actually think that would be terrific. And also, right. by the way, we do allow you to share issues along with screenshots so you know exactly where the issue resides. And we're going to show that as well. We do have a couple so, of minutes to show that. Perfect. I'm going to focus on the, the issue that our AI helped us find. Let's share that one because it's the coolest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> brand new stuff. So I just I went back into the, my test page and I am in the extension. I click share issue. It says, cool, your issue has been copied to your clipboard. So let's take a look at that real quick. We have a couple minutes. All right, so it actually generated a, a, a page that's dedicated to the specific issue. We even have a screenshot of the element here, um, and you can share this with your team. We hope you do, actually. Uh, and there's all sorts of useful information, like a description of the issue, the selector for it, the source code, like I said, a screenshot, how you might go about fixing it, uh, the URL it was found, when it was found, who found it, all that stuff, um, and, and a help page for that rule. Uh, but what Pregen I want to show is how you might apply that to your to whatever processes you have. And I'm sure you have issue tracking. So <laughs> no wrong thing. This is Jira. So I'm going to go into Jira into our Axe DevTools demo project. Um, I can I can do all sorts of cool stuff. So first what I'm going to do is paste in the uh, that link so my teammates can go there. Um, I don't even have to think. I'm just going to steal the uh, the description here and put it as a summary. Um, and we can put all sorts of other useful information like you know notes for your developer like this is from the button component and stuff like that. You can actually grab the selector here, um, anything you want. So it's a really useful page uh, for breaking down a specific issue. And again, that screenshot will help you find the element in context. So assuming we do that uh, and assuming we actually went ahead and did all those guided tests, let's pretend that we did. I wish we had enough time to do those. Um, so let's say that we've done our, our Axe automated tests. We've gone through all the IGTs. Let's see what's left. 
So Preeti, I'm going to hand it over to you where you can walk us through all that awesomeness. Absolutely. So remember, I told you in Acts Auditor, you can have detailed instructions of what to do. One of the questions that people really have is, I don't want to repeat anything. I don't want to be duplicating work, right? So what was done through the 50% automated testing, whether you did it through the APIs, you know, the multi-filtration or the step-by-step iterative process that you're following of doing the 12 steps. Um, But at the end of the day, in step 11, when you're actually trying to get to 100%, you want to know what's left to test. Uh, When you're done with the automated testing and you're done with all the intelligent guided tests, we actually, in the Axe DevTools browser extension, give you a list of what's left to test. We also separate it out because um, there are certain things you have to only test once per application or website. You don't have to repeat it per page. You don't have to repeat it per page state. Then there are things, the second thing, set of things, that you are going to uh, test, which are going to be once per page. You don't have to test it per page state, just once per page. And we give you those three tests that you need to run per page. And then, of course, we also give you per page state. That means you will need to put the state uh, page into the state that you want to test in, like whether it's a modal window that you will launch and then test that. Um, but we give you the 15 things that you have to do that remain to be done for full 100% work at 2.1 A and AA coverage uh, to get to that, the 15 additional things that you have to do. They've got very detailed instructions as well, and you can um, actually cut and paste the descriptions by clicking on uh, the checkpoint and be able to, again, create a defect very easily. We've made it very simple. Um, so with that said, I do want to leave some time for Q&A. Are there any questions coming in, Liz? Remember, no accessibility broken windows. We need your help to do that. And one thing I wanted to add is our, our goal ultimately yeah. is to to diminish this content. We want there to be very little left to test. So oh, yeah. intelligent yes. guided tests in the future will hopefully cover some of this. Um, and that's our ultimate goal is to, to make it easy to get, get you in full compliance. Yes. Absolutely. Over. Thank you so much, Harris and Pretty. We do have a ton of questions uh, <laughs> to go over, and you both must be mind readers because the very first question that received the most upvotes was, what aspects won't be covered with automated testing, which needs to be covered with manual testing, which we just <laughs> demoed. Very awesome. Okay. okay, let's dive into the next one here. Um, and if for everybody who's here, please add any questions that you have. We'll get through as many as we can in the next seven minutes. Um, there's also an upvote feature. So upvote the questions that you want to hear the most. I'll be prioritizing those. All right. Well, uh, this question is, there's a lot of questions on Linter. Um, this one is, yeah. uh, will the Linter be available for other editors? For example, uh, brackets? Right now, the linter is available for VS Code. We do have IntelliJ um, that is planned, and we definitely welcome any suggestions. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. What frameworks uh, do Axe tools support? Well, there are a lot, um, more than I could list here. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's a puppeteer thing that I just showed. There's, there's a playwright integration. There's Cucumber. Um, Karma, the, Jest, yeah. the, a number of them, right? But the, I think the key is that whatever your framework, uh, talk to us. We're happy to support it. You know, whether it is a custom integration or out-of-the-box integration, we are very eager to uh, support your platform. Awesome. It's not okay. even just JavaScript either. You, there's, there's Python integrations in Java. Yeah. Pretty sharp. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, is this tool only for desktop testing? What about mobile? There's a few questions on mobile here. Yeah, that's a great question. So what we were focusing on is Axe DevTools HTML, but we definitely have Axe DevTools for native mobile, iOS, and Android. There are separate sessions for that. Um, 
in AxCon. Some of them, I think there was one yesterday. I don't know if we have another one today. But look at the agenda and um, definitely get in touch with us because we do have uh, iOS and Android support. Yep. I think there was at least two um, mobile sessions yesterday that are already available on demand. So definitely go check those out if you haven't already. Yeah. All right. Are there websites for which the Axe DevTools Chrome extension would not work? I've noticed the tool doesn't show up in Chrome DevTools from time to time. You know, this is something that we just uh, saw happening in a session live by Steve Sawson that you will see. Uh, it appears to be that somehow some of the widgets out there are disabling things and doing things that are maybe overreaching, including disabling our extension. Uh, we're going to be looking into that. They're also doing the same for Wave from WebAIM. So that is also very uh, concerning. But um, yeah, that may be the reason. If you go to a website where you have a widget enabled that is disabling our extension, let us know. But in right. theory, other than you know defects and bugs and quirks like that, yeah, it's supposed to run on every page. Um, you can yeah. even go into Chrome colon slash slash extensions and enable it in incognito mode if you need to do kind of sessionless testing or anything like that. Yeah, great. Thank you both. Got some more on uh, Linter here. Uh, does the Axe Linter work on JSP pages as well? I believe so. I'm not completely familiar yeah. with JSP if I'm being honest. <laughs> oh, Java. It's a, okay. yeah, JSP. Yeah. I believe so too. Yeah. If it if it's rendered in in the browser, the extension can scan it. Great. Uh, can the Axlinter work against Twig or other templating frameworks? Um, we have a session that was devoted to the Linter, but um, I don't believe Twig is supported. Um, again, you know, um, contact us and we'll see what we can do. Awesome. Yeah, I think out of the box right now, the Linter is doing um, Markdown, HTML, JSX, TSX, uh, Vue maybe. I don't know off the top of my head, but a, num a number of languages off the bat, and you know, we'll, we'll always be adding more. Great. Uh, a few people asked, Harris, if your repo would, is, is open and available on GitHub, is that something that you would mind sharing? Uh, yeah, I think it'll be a follow-up thing. I might have to remove some of the kind of custom pre-commit stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I can clean it up a bit and, and share it. Uh, it Maybe when yeah. we share the slides, we can do that. Right. Thank you. Uh, okay, this person is asking, how screen reader friendly is the tool? I believe this was when you were demoing the browser extension, Harris. Ah, yes. Um, we're obviously, <laughs> you know, an accessibility shop, so we take that pretty serious. Uh, we do... Uh, tons of testing for screen reader usage. Um, one thing I, I kind of glossed over is when I made that uh, element selection, you can actually uh, select an element with just a keyboard too. Uh, so if you're a screen reader user or a keyboard only user with site, uh, you'll be able to do that. So you don't need a mouse. So everything we try to do um, is, is, is keyboard friendly and assistive technology friendly. blind tester, you might need to pull in a colleague to, to uh, verify some stuff for you. But um, as far as the actual UI, we strive to make it uh, screen reader friendly. And if you notice and, anything, and please tell us. Yes, that's what I was going to emphasize. We take accessibility uh, defects very seriously, but as with any software, they, you know bugs do uh, get through sometimes. And uh, But if you let us know, get in touch, if you have any trouble, we are 100% committed to it and we treat it as a critical issue. Absolutely. Great. And with that, I think we are at time. I do want to thank both Preeti and Harris for a great session. Uh, thank you all for attending this session and for joining us here at AxCon. We do still have a handful more um, <laughs> hours left in the day. So uh, please be sure to uh, join those sessions too and, and have a great time. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>